Hello everybody, this video is going to be super full throttle. My throttle could not be any fuller for this video. My throttle levels are overflowing. I'm gonna rank every coaster and give them a review. Every drop and every hill, every launch and every loop. What's going on everybody? My name is Mario. This is a channel all about amusement park type stuff, but mostly coasters. And today in my never ending journey to rank and review every single coaster I have ever been on, we're going to be talking about Full Throttle at Six Flags Magic Mountain. But before we do that, I wanted to quickly say thank you to anybody that is subscribed to this channel. You guys are awesome. And to anybody that isn't subscribed, you better subscribe or your throttle will never be full. Whatever the f that means. But without any further ado, let's review. Let's go ahead and start with the stats. That's for full throttle. This premier rides multi-launch coaster has a height of 165 feet, a top speed of 70 miles per hour, two inversions, a track length of 2,200 feet, and a ride duration of 48 seconds. Full Throttle used to boast the tallest loop in the world, and while it no longer claims that title, it is still the tallest in North America. And to go into a little more detail with that vertical loop, let's jump into the ride experience starting off-ride. Full Throttle sits near the front of Magic Mountain and has its own little plot area. This plaza area looks nice with Full Throttle's massive, previously record-breaking loop towering over the area. You also have a cool sign for the ride, a giant screen playing various extreme sports. This is paired up with loud, high-energy music, and I think it's kind of weird. I'm not entirely sure what the vibe they were going for was, but I do appreciate that they tried to do something a little high-energy to make the ride and area less bland. Aside from looking nice at the front of the park, you can see various parts of Full Throttle going over the walkway at the top of Samurai Summit near Superman, and you can see the second inversion walking down that hill towards the underground. Now since this ride is at the front of the park and is so highly visible, it almost always has a long line. This is not helped by the fact that the ride has a very low capacity with only 18 riders per train, and while Full Throttle does often run two trains, it has been known to run one train from time to time. And speaking of the trains on full throttle, let's go ahead and dive into the on-ride experience. Now, unfortunately, loading and unloading on any of the new Premier Rides trains is an absolute nightmare. The rows are so narrow that it's almost impossible to get through. And additionally, for full throttle, you have to leave all of your loose articles on the other side of the station. This means that you have to pass through your row twice. On top of this, the trains are also not the most comfortable once you are seated. While full throttle does fortunately have seat belts instead of comfort collars, the lower part of the lap bar will press up against your shins, which is especially uncomfortable for taller riders. That being said, full throttle shin restraints are slightly softer than other other premier rides trains that I've been on. But enough talking about the trains, let's talk about the actual experience once you're sent out of the station. Full throttle wastes absolutely no time getting started as the ride begins with a launch directly out of the station. This launch uses LSMs to propel you to the top of that loop, and it is not the most forceful launch in the world. Just as a point of reference, I'd say the first launch is pretty comparable to Velocicoaster's first launch, the premier ride Spaghetti Bowl coasters launches, or even the the backlot stunt coaster launches. But anyways, what follows the launch is significantly better as you have one of the best, if not the single best hang time moments in the world. Going up into this loop, you don't really get any positive G-forces, but by the time you get close to the apex of the loop, you are already falling out of your seat, dangling upside down, and it really feels like you're traveling in slow motion. Super floaty is how I would describe it. Now, aside from this being really comfortable, really quiet, quality hang time. The hang time also lasts for a good three or four, maybe even more seconds, depending on how slow you're traversing that loop. 
Now, unfortunately, the exit out of the loop is the same as the entry into the loop because you are not going to get any forces there either. After the loop, you're going to take a large, wide turn that travels slightly up the hill. And again, this unfortunately does not provide any forces. It would be really nice if this turn was a little bit tighter. Maybe this could have worked an airtime hill in somehow. I just really don't think this element does anything other than getting you towards the next set of elements. You transit out of that right turn into a left turn that is the same, just shorter and slower. Again, I really wish it provided forces of some sort. The one positive I will say is that you are at least feeling the sense of speed, especially if you're sitting in the front row, because you are at least traversing the majority of those two elements at a relatively high speed. You then head into the ride second inversion, which is a dive loop, and this dive loop is funky. Almost think of it like half of a big barrel roll into half of a loop. It's really interesting. It does provide some decent laterals and some kind of awkward positive g-forces as you quickly change direction and curl underneath yourself. That dive loop drops you off into an underground tunnel where you will abruptly come to a full stop while you listen to some audio and potentially see some lighting effects. After all those shenanigans, you're treated to a backwards launch that sends you most of the way up that dive loop and this time around the dive loop is much more enjoyable. If you're in the front row of the train, you'll be facing straight down, but if you are towards the back of the train, you will essentially be inverted again. So no matter where you're sitting on the train, you're either going to be experiencing some fun floater airtime or some good hang time. You go back down that dive loop one more time, launch through the tunnel, and I'm not sure if this is the top speed or if the first launch gets you to your top speed, but in my opinion, this part of the ride feels the fastest. After that third launch, you climb up into a top hat, which provides some interesting airtime that varies greatly depending on where you are sitting. Now, a few people have said that this top hat does not provide any airtime, and I'm genuinely confused as to why they say that. Perhaps they're referencing the very top of the hill? Because yes, that top of the hill is where you are not experiencing any airtime, but you do definitely get airtime going up and coming down out of the top hat. To be more specific, in the front row, you are getting abrupt, powerful ejector going up the hill, while in the back, you get loader airtime going up the hill, and then coming down, those forces are reversed. In the front, going down the hill, you get some good floater airtime, while in the back, you get some really insane, abrupt, strong ejector airtime that is just trying to rip you out of your seat. So again, that's why I'm confused. Some people say that this element doesn't really have any airtime. Now coming down that last hill is a little awkward because you do actually engage with the brakes while you are still coming down that drop. So you will kind of get forced into your restraint, but it's not really the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And you do decelerate at a relatively consistent rate. It's just weird to be decelerating while you are traveling down a hill. But that's it for the layout of full throttle. It definitely feels like a short ride experience. That being said, it definitely does feel longer than that 2002 200 feet of track that I mentioned earlier. So the ride does make great use of what it has. In addition, I should mention that the ride is also very smooth. There's some aspects of it that I mentioned earlier that aren't the most comfortable, but there isn't a single bump in the track. So it is very comfortable from that perspective. So out of 10, what would I rate full throttle? Overall, it is a fun and enjoyable coaster that would be better if it had an extra element or even if just one of the current elements on it were a little bit more more impactful. That being said, I give it a 7.5 out of 10, which is not too bad at all. As far as where it ranks out of the 229 coasters that I have been on so far, Full Throttle sits at number 66. It places just above Matterhorn due to its larger scale and higher excitement, although Raptor beats it out by a tad simply for having a longer ride duration and more elements. So that's what I think about Full Throttle. I'd love to know what you guys have to say about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video video. It is much appreciated. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. And make sure you tune in next time where I'll be talking about whatever this wheel lands on.